Hey everybody, Mike Canales here again from the OCTC Healthcare Facilities Leadership Program. Um, continuing my series, this is part three of the series. And in this series, what I want to talk to you about is the fact that a pathway attracts and retains talent in light of a shrinking talent pool. So when you think about um, retention and recruitment these days, you know, we really need a way to show folks looking for jobs, especially great talent, that the healthcare facilities profession or industry is a fantastic option when it comes to seeking a career. You know, not just a job, but a career. But we're up against some pretty interesting challenges these days. The first thing is what I want you to see is, take a look at the uh, this next graph here, which has to do with the participation rate, labor force participation rate. And what you see is pretty much a very steady decline in participation rate, all right, in the labor workforce, to the point where we're right around 60%, which is the lowest it has been historically, short of what happened during pandemic. The other thing is, if you look at the, um, the rate for men, it has dropped even more dramatically. Now, part of this has to do with back in the day, in the 70s or so, is when you start having women come into the workforce, and so you start balancing households as far as who was working, right, primary income, breadwinner, that being said, you still see this men participation rate dropping and continue to drop even to today. One other really important statistic here, which is pretty dramatic, is this is really the younger folks, the folks who are coming out of school, not entering the workforce. Now, they were in the workforce at a rate of about 50% for the longest time. And you see this dramatic shift of participation with a little bit of uptick just lately, if you will. And what this is about is more and more young people are opting to go to college. Okay, that's they're going straight to college. They're not going into the workforce. And I point this out because this is a huge opportunity for us, right? There is a lot of work in healthcare facilities that is very introductory, very assistant tech, tech level one kind of work. You know, a lot of inspections, redundant inspections that we do, or a lot of basic work, you know, the light bulb changing type work, things like that that we do. And so there is an opportunity to bring people in, introduce them to the industry. But when we bring them in, we need to do something with them, right? We need to show them an opportunity, show them a career path, and be able to vet them out and see who makes for a good fit for our organization. Another very important statistic is not in labor force, the rise of the NILF. And these are men of primary age who have left the workforce and are not seeking work. Okay, these folks just are not looking for work. And there's all kinds of reasons why this is happening, but it is at a record high now as far as men of, of primary age not working in the workforce. Now, granted, what this means is we have to draw from a much broader, a much broader group of folks coming into our industry. And when you look at the healthcare facilities world, what do you see? You see a very large population population of men you know, probably in the 90 some percent range, right? Well, while there may be some tasks that require, you know, really strong, heavy lifting work per se, really in healthcare facilities, it is probably one of the maintenance industries that doesn't require that kind of heavy lifting work as compared to other maintenance fields per se, you know, working outside. Even that being said, is there really a difference to begin with? Because at the end of the day, we know most of our work, we can create all kinds of accommodations or all kinds of equipment to supplement when you have to lift something heavy repeatedly, so on and so forth, if that's even an argument. And that being said, maintenance, if you like maintenance, if you like repairing things, as far as I know, I don't know there's any restriction as to who can do that work if you have a desire to do it, right? Also, adding to this is the birth rate. This is a really important statistic. What this is speaking to is we don't just have a lot of people retiring right now. We have fewer people coming into the pipeline, and that is going to persist. You know, that is going to persist. You know, we, we are not seeing this trend reverse by any means. If anything, it continues to drop. In most developed countries, there are countries that it's much, much, much lower. You know, for example, Japan, South Korea, some of the European countries where they can no longer even populate their rural villages anymore, right? And, and this it, it's getting lopsided. So that talent pool is really, really shrinking. One of the things I want you to understand is that nearly 90% of young people say they want their employer to focus on professional development or career growth opportunities. 
You know, this is this is a desire that they have. That's a desire, I think, of many of us. You know, if you're at the very end of your career and you really don't have a desire to, you know, go in advance, you just want to wind it out. Of course, you may be the exception. But most folks in a profession want to have some continuous, ongoing professional development and career growth just to know more about their job and to do it better. And having said that, it says, while raises may encourage some workers to stick around, the findings suggest that employees, especially high performers, will remain in jobs that challenge them, utilize their expertise, and provide meaning. You know, I don't know that there is any industry, and probably a few, don't get me wrong, but I would say healthcare, when it comes to people being passionate about the job, being an understanding how what they do impacts people in a positive way. Healthcare is right there at the very, very top of the pyramid. I know you would agree with me because most of you, this is why you're here, right? This is why I'm here. And that being said, this is really my finding, you know, wrapping this up, you know, this pathway, this ideal of how people come in today, you know, in this kind of a upper figure here, there really is a hard way in for anybody who is younger. There's really not a good way in. You have to know somebody, right? You have to uh, be lucky, be at the right place at the right time. When you develop a pathway, we as people, as recruiters looking for employment, we know where to go and they know where to come. And you'll start seeing people coming into this industry at a much younger age, already seen it through the program. They get it earlier. They're molded earlier. They're more, if you will, uh, malleable earlier. And they're starting to understand this profession at an earlier time in their career, which is changing the trajectory of the careers and they're impacting more immediately the healthcare facilities profession. So it's my hope that you understand from this presentation just the value and the importance of recruiting earlier, of putting a pathway in place. You know, they may not even take the pathway, but the fact that it's there will hold them and will give them something to look forward to as they go through those life transitions. You know, what I have seen over and over again, a lot of students tend to go back to school, if you will, after they get married, after they get the house, after kids start to grow up a bit. And then like, okay, second half of my career, you know, I want to reinvest in it. And that's a great opportunity. And I see that a lot. In fact, that's the majority of the students I get today. And so this is great for folks that are in the industry. This is great for folks that we're recruiting into the industry, right? And we can not only develop them, we can also start to really have meaningful succession planning. And I'm going to be talking more about this in the other one. Remember, this is part three. And I also have part four, five, six, and seven, which will start to feel a little bit more about the impact of that early recruitment, the impact of that early development, and what it could have in terms of an impact on our profession, healthcare facilities profession, both as technicians and as leaders and as executives. Well, thanks for listening to this part of the present of the of the I guess the case that I'm making for a pathway. Uh, join me, I hope, for the next. Uh, I think I have what four more to go. So hope you enjoyed it. Take care.